There are reactive forms of oxygen, known as reactive oxygen species, and reactive forms of nitrogen, known as reactive nitrogen species. These uh, compounds are very reactive and will damage airways and promote the inflammation, which will then promote the remodeling of airways, which will then uh, increase the likelihood of asthma. ROS and RNS can be produced uh, through inflammation. They can be released by a number of white blood cells. They're also present in air pollution. Now, not only might there be genetic and environmental causes of their release, there are also a number of antioxidants, uh, which can be things in our diet, such as certain uh, vitamins, but then also a number of genes, which can now counteract uh, the actions of ROS and RNS. Polymorphisms exist in a number of the genes which produce ROS and a number of genes which offer protection from ROS, such as the GSTP enzymes, which affect asthma risk. Some of these genes give good examples of how genes and environment can interact. Let's take, for example, the GSTP enzymes, which help to detoxify ROS species. If one has functional GST enzymes and lives in a good environment where ROS production would be minimal, then asthma risk would be low. If one had functional genes but lived in an environment with cigarette smoke and air pollution, then the enzymes could detoxify the ROS and asthma risk might still be low. If you didn't have functional genes but lived uh, in an area without ROS production from air pollution, asthma risk might be low. But if you had bad genes and a bad environment, now asthma risk might be very high. 